Over my head, I hear music in the air. I'm Chris Marks, and I have been leading the initiative on my way. Hi, I'm Carla Rocher. I work as an inclusion advocate. Um, I've had the absolute privilege of working behind the scenes this past year on the On My Way project, getting to know the families. At the end of our first year of the project, we decided that we would say thank you to all the parents and all the, the kids that helped us out. We had a great big dinner in this very same room. I felt as though I was amongst friends and the four families stood by us, continued to support us, continued to allow us into their rooms. But as I sat around that table and uh, broke the bread with those families, I felt very close and like Carla, I felt very proud to be involved in the project. And we are going to look at the four families two years later. So they've allowed us to tell their story, invited us into their houses and into their lives during good times and bad times. We followed them in the years prior to graduation. We filmed their graduation. In some cases, we tracked what they did and how they did it in their overage year. We looked at them at school, we looked at them in the job, and we, we looked at them at home. We spoke to the youth themselves and we spoke to their families. Devin was the first on my way youth that I had the opportunity of, of working with. A real passion that he has is for theatre. Still continuing to volunteer at the Charles Best Theatre Program and, and does that with a lot of pride and joy. He's currently deeply in love with basketball and he's going to tournaments all over the place. He's a man of real balance. He has a, he has a perspective in his life that's, that's quite healthy. Devin chose not to go for an overage year. He looked at everybody and he said, why would I stick around? I've graduated, my time's come, I'm moving on. Well, he was accepted into the light warehouse training program at, at Douglas College, where he was trained for a year, tried it out, found out that in the end, he, didn't really like it that much. It wasn't something that he wanted to do. He had been given a work experience in his last year within the Coquitlam School District at Thrifty's Foods. He had learned a little something about how to, how to work on the job at, in a supermarket. Through his networking, he found out that Thrifty's in his own neighborhood was actually looking for a job and was able, actually in the end able to come up with a job which now employs him 20 hours a week. Oh, it's doing really good. By working in five days means Sunday to Thursdays. After work, by going back to my old school again at Charles Best to find training in stagecraft. The work is not the most important thing to Devin. He has lots of other interests. Devin is a man of real balance. He has a he has a perspective in his life that's that's quite healthy. It's a work is a part of his life, but it gives him money so he can do the things that he really loves. When I heard Megan talking about her family, she has expectations for all of her boys, and the expectations are the same. It turns out that Kit has moved out of his home. Where do you live now, Kit? Kelly. With Kelly. We had options with CLBC to talk about um, home, a home share, so we had a really good facilitator that we met. He led us through the process, but I put together um, his plan and what we wanted, and, and it described Kit uh, according to their guidelines yeah. on the categories that's important yeah. to them. We presented that to CLBC, they took it and put it in for approval and we got what we okay. wanted. So the home share is wonderful. Well, he can go home after his day out and um, be, with, be part of a family. Everything that Megan said in terms of her desire to give her son a life just like her brother actually worked out. Uh, they hang out together, they go to church on Sundays, they... He's kind of a busy boy, but he's yeah. part of the family, and that's what yeah. I think is important. Found a house, found a support, and for the other three to hear that he had actually done this, I think was a bit inspiring. They were, they were amazed by that. The ability to actually secure that funding and, and integrate all of the supports, I think it's proof that it can be done in any community in British Columbia with a little bit of persistence. Kayla had decided she wanted to work in early child environments. She was very comfortable with kids. She loved being amongst children. So the last year has been a story of Kayla and Teresa exploring ways that she can find her way into these working environments where they're both absolutely convinced this is where she needs to be. 
There was an early childhood education program in a local college at Kwantlen. It wasn't available yet. Thought maybe that those courses would have a spot for her. It's hard to have the doors shut mm -hmm. so many times. I think Kayla and Teresa's story is their efforts to stretch the system so that it can include all youth into the training and eventual job placement. I'm on the paper, booyah! <laughs> on strike! No, you weren't on strike. What oh, were you doing? You were rallying. I was in a rally. For public education. It's been the transformation of Teresa Kayla's mom that has been really, really interesting to us. She is the one now who is hitting the streets and taking on the, the hardcore advocacy business of pushing the post-secondary education system and, and pushing the funding system so that it will open up and provide for her daughter. But you've got to just keep trying, I mm -hmm. suppose, right? First thing that you realize when you're with Olivia and, and her family is their cultural background as children, to see all of their relatives in that household. Whatever decisions are going to happen for, for uh, Olivia in her life, it's always going to be in the safe capacity of that family. I really feel that Olivia is going to be okay. Well, I know there's a lot of services out there. Um, what made you guys pick this one? Some of her friends will be going. They're not big on big groups going out. They seem to be more like two, maybe three, but generally two. Um, we want to work on life skills, so being in a smaller number is a little bit easier to accommodate her. They're based on unemployment. They like them all to be working a couple of days a week, which I think is perfect for her because she won't be able to work full time, but to have a couple hours a week to kind of do something and get paid, I think would be great for her. How about living? Are you planning on staying with your mom and dad for a little bit longer? I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's <laughs> nice of you. Bye, Missy <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> You're a silly kid. So you're yes, she is. The answer is yes. There's no question for me at all that um, Olivia's parents will always do what's in her best interest and what she wants to do. I think all we wanted to do was to show you the story and, and touch you, move you a little bit, convince you that you could make these same changes in your own way, in your own community.